everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a shoe collection. And as we get to the end of 2022, I just want to do a little bit of a review of my wardrobe. So you'll start to see a couple more of these collection videos on my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you a review of all the different shoes I own, let you know how often I've worn them. So within each category, I'll probably rank it from most worn to least worn. And I'll also give you an idea of how I like to style these shoes and what they look like on. There's lots to cover in today's video, so I hope you guys enjoy this one. And keep an eye out for the other collection videos that I'm about to film for bags, outerwear, and the different areas of my wardrobe. Some quick things to mention to make this review more helpful is that I'm 160 centimeters, five foot three, and if a shoe can give me a little bit of additional height, it is always a bonus. I love a shoe that has a chunky sole because I find myself to be more pear shaped, a bit wider through the hip and leg compared to my upper body. Proportionally, and to my eye at least, I tend to look better in chunkier shoes versus very flat shoes. I do own some leather care products, so I've got a leather conditioner, a suede protector, as well as a leather cleaner, and these just help prolong the life of my shoes and also keeps them clean. My products here are from RM Williams, but I don't really have a brand recommendation. I think anything um, you have access to should work fine. For nicer quality shoes that have a leather sole, I always bring them to the cobbler to get one of these rubber soles put on, and it just helps prolong the life of the sole. Leather soles are delicate, and if you don't do this, I find that they wear out a lot faster. The last thing to get out of the way is that I do have wider feet, so I tend to prefer shoes that have a wide fit versus very narrow, of course. And with all of that out of the way, I can just stop repeating myself in every single shoe review in today's video. Why don't we start with sneakers today? I find that because sneakers are so comfortable, they're so practical, over the years, they're definitely one of my most worn shoes. And we'll just start with New Balance because they're definitely having a little bit of a moment right now. Even though New Balance has been very popular lately, I do genuinely just love the way they look. But I also find that they're really, really good comfort-wise for anyone who has wider feet. I've tried a couple of styles from Nike, from Adidas, and they tend to not be as wide as this one, and therefore less comfortable for me. These sneakers here are the 2002R, and it's probably my sportiest looking sneaker. I wear this to the gym for exercise. I wear this when I'm running errands with different outfits I like to wear. And I also wore this while traveling in Paris a lot because they were honestly shoes I could walk all day in and feel very comfortable. Despite this sportier look, it does go with a lot of my outfits. And I feel like especially with a tailored trouser or a fluid trouser, it looks really nice with the sneaker. I wouldn't wear this style with dresses or skirts personally, but with different trousers and pants, I really like the look. I have another two pairs of the 574. So one in the gray and the other in a super bright blue. I'm going to show you the bright blue and not the gray because the gray are the shoes I wear when I'm hiking and often in not so favorable weather conditions. So they're not looking their best. These are also the 574 and I'm just absolutely obsessed with this cobalt blue color. But I also love this kind of boucle texture that it's got. It feels like a real statement shoe, but I surprisingly get quite a few outfits because I think this blue shade works with a lot of colors in my wardrobe. I especially love to wear this blue shoe when I'm wearing colors like brown, beige, camel, warmer tones that beautifully contrast this really bright blue shade. I especially recommend colorful sneakers to anyone who firstly wears sneakers a lot, but also has a more neutral wardrobe and you want that pop of color in all of your outfits. Having this one pair of sneakers will bring a lot of color into all of your neutral looks. While I don't know if this exact color combination is still available, I did see a very similar one on Arquette recently, so um, if that is still around, I'll link it down below. This next pair of sneakers are from Acne Studios. They're super, super chunky and very statement, and I just feel like because a lot of people probably won't like them, I've never really styled it in a video. I purchased these shoes on the Outnet on sale. I think it was around 60-70% off because I think this shoe is now discontinued and the craze has definitely gone down. But all these years later, I looked at this shoe and I still really liked it. So I thought this is a perfect time to pick them up. The main thing about this shoe is that it has this super, super chunky sole. And it's also got some navy detailing on the top as well as the sides. This shoe definitely gives me a little bit of additional height. I'm at least two inches or five centimeters taller in these shoes. And I love that about this style. This is definitely not one of those shoes that will match with almost all of my outfits and I can just slip it on and go. I feel like when I want to wear this, I have to have the right outfit on. Otherwise, it doesn't look great. I would actually consider wearing this shoe with the outfit I have on right now. 
And I feel like in summer outfits where we have a little bit more skin showing, um, this shoe will be a fun statement pick. The other brand of sneakers I own are from Veja. So I have two pairs, I have the V10 and I also have the V12. Um, the V12 are, again, very well-loved shoes. I think I've had them for about four years. So they're looking quite dirty. I have my pair with the suede on the front and I can say after four years, the suede is looking quite discolored. I personally find suede a little bit harder to clean than the smooth leather. So with my white leather shoes, even after maybe four or five years, I can still get them to look really white and really new. Whereas suede, I have a little bit of trouble with. So that's something I'll mention about this shoe. Maybe this is because suede is just more delicate. Maybe it's because I haven't found a good way to clean suede. But I do find that the suede makes the shoe look a lot older compared to maybe a leather. The other pair of beige sneakers I have are the V10s in white. The part that I struggled with with the V12 was that the tongue was really stiff, so it will cut into my ankle. But what I found with the V10s, because I also purchased these two years later, is that I feel like they've maybe updated this and the tongue has become a lot softer. So maybe if you purchase it now, it's not going to be an issue. But this was the part that was the hardest for me to break in, especially on the V12s I got from a few years back. Other than the thing I mentioned with the tongue of the shoe, the Veja is actually a very comfortable sneaker. It feels a bit unfair to compare it to New Balance because this is obviously um, also for performance. So the sole of this has more cushioning. You just feel a bit more supported in the shoe. This is more your usual sneaker where I find it comfortable, but it definitely doesn't compete with a New Balance at all. In terms of styling, out of everything that I've showed today, this is probably the most versatile shoe in that it'll go with trousers, it'll go with skirts and dresses, and it's simple enough, it'll match with everything. That is my not so little sneaker collection, but if I was to choose my most worn, it would definitely be my New Balance shoes, both the 2002R as well as the 574s in this bright blue. My next couple of pairs of shoes are a little bit miscellaneous, but I'll best describe them as closed toe shoes that aren't loafers. Let's start with this one from Cezanne. I really love the way these look and I think it's a perfect summer shoe when I don't want to wear a sandal. It's an ideal closed toe summer shoe. Even though at the beginning I said I like more chunky shoes, this is one of the few daintier styles that I feel like is quite flattering. And it's because it's got a couple of things going for it that makes it more flattering. First up, we've got the slightly pointed toe and that always has an elongating feel compared to a very square toe or even just a very round toe. So that's the first thing I liked about this shoe, feels elongating. What is a nude shade is definitely going to be different for all of us, but I find that if a shoe is roughly my skin tone, it always looks more elongating because it doesn't cut me off there. This also has a small two and a half centimeter or one inch heel, and even the smallest heel I feel like makes a big difference to how I feel in a shoe. I love a shoe that has a small heel versus being completely flat. This type of woven look seems to be a very popular style for Cezanne and they do it across a few different styles of shoes. So if you want a closed toe shoe for summer, I think this woven design is very breathable, um, but it also adds nice texture. I own a pair of clogs and these are also from Cezanne. So all my Cezanne shoes seem to fit into this miscellaneous category. The shoe, as you can see, is in a mustard yellow color in a suede material. And I chose mine out with a slightly lower heel. I often see clogs styled in a very bohemian way with different types of floral dresses. And I actually prefer to wear clogs as more of a statement piece when the rest of my outfit is very simple. The shoe acts as that little bit of experimentation in an otherwise very safe outfit. In terms of the comfort of the shoe, I've not had an issue with the sole or the upper, but I had some people tell me that clogs feel very hot and sweaty to wear. And I live in Australia, it gets very hot. I don't think this will be a middle of summer kind of shoe for me. This is definitely more of an autumn shoe, maybe kind of early summer or late summer, but not in the middle, it will be way too hot. Unless clogs really speak to you or you have a more bohemian style, I don't really feel like clogs will ever be a staple shoe that um, I would recommend people to own. I don't even believe in myself, but these are my only heels if we don't include heeled boots. And I thought I'll put this into the miscellaneous category because these are also from Cezanne. This is my last Cezanne shoe and I thought I'll talk about the Cezanne shoes all together. It's been a very long time since I purchased heels just because 2020, 2021 were obviously very, very casual years. So only this year have I felt like there are occasions where I want to be wearing a heel again. During the Christmas New Year season, I feel like I'll be wearing these shoes a lot 
considering they're my only heel that are appropriate for the summer. This is the Katie from Cezanne and I chose it in this really rich chocolatey brown colour. This colour I felt like made this shoe feel a bit more sleek and a bit more modern compared to some of the other styles they were doing. And I mean, colour is definitely one of my favourite things about this shoe. We've got a block heel here and then a little bit of a heel at the front. So it just makes the heel height quite comfortable to wear. It doesn't feel too high where it becomes very unnatural for my foot. And with this heel height, I can still go about my evening, do a bit of walking, etc, etc, without feeling like I'm in great discomfort. For anyone wondering about the width of Cezanne shoes, I find them to run a little bit more on the narrow side rather than very wide. So that part is not ideal, but I still found these shoes comfortable enough. And I love the style so much that I am going to keep them. If you have very wide feet, then I'm not sure I would recommend this style. But if you have slightly wide, normal, or even more narrow, I think this will work quite well. Since I just mentioned three pairs of Cezanne shoes, I do want to quickly touch on quality. So over the last maybe two years, I feel like Cezanne shoe quality has felt a lot nicer. So it's the very obvious things and the more subtle. One of the most obvious is that with their shoes, they used to give you this um, rubber sole that you had to stick on yourself. And it was usually not the perfect match for the style of shoe. It was a bit fiddly and it just didn't make the shoe feel like really good quality that you had to stick on something yourself after buying the shoe. Nowadays, you've got the leather sole here, but you've got the rubber sole put on already. And it just feels a lot nicer, a lot more tailored compared to sticking this pad on the shoe that doesn't really even fit. The more subtle details is that I feel like the footbed is a little bit more comfortable. There seems to be a bit more cushioning than what I remember because I owned a pair of shoes similar to this maybe four years ago and I feel like the inside cushion was definitely lacking and it felt quite hard. Whereas now there's a reasonable amount of cushioning and it feels quite comfortable. I've been very happy with my other two pairs of Cezanne shoes and this one looks very promising as well and I feel like there's been a nice improvement in quality for their shoes. Out of these three pairs of shoes that didn't really fit into other categories, my most worn has definitely been these shoes. I mean, I wear these more than the clog, um, so these are my most worn. These shoes are very new, however, I feel like these are soon going to be my most worn, just because they're my only heel in my wardrobe. Let's do my loafers now, and what I love about loafers is that you can wear them for most of the year. Maybe not in the hottest days of summer, but other than that, I can pretty much wear them year-round. These are my Todd's loafers that I purchased at an outlet in Italy. And they're my favorite loafers I've ever owned because not only do I like the style of them, they are super, super comfortable. I started wearing these on holiday when I was walking all day, pretty much immediately after purchasing them. And I did not get a blister at all in these shoes. Even though this was purchased at an outlet and might be an older season piece, they do a lot of shoes with a very, very similar design. And I also believe this fit is the same as some of the newer styles. This is made from a brown suede and I really like that the gold kind of detailing is a very aged gold rather than being super super shiny. The fringing is a fun little detail, you know sometimes loafers can be very simple and I do like shoes that have a bit more detail and you're gonna see that across a lot of the shoes that I own. I like something that has more detail rather than being super classic. I really like the sole of this shoe because it's that perfect balance where it's a little bit chunky without going super, super extreme. And I just find it to be a very classic sole, especially what I said about thinking the chunkier style suits my leg more. This is the ideal kind of chunky for me. My absolute favorite thing about this shoe is that it's very comfortable, especially if you do have wider feet. I find this style of shoe runs a little bit wider, which means it's very comfortable from first wear. And because my one is in suede, it's a bit softer, which helps with the comfort. If I was to splurge on a pair of black loafers in the future, I would definitely go back to Todd's because I feel like this style and fit of shoe is just perfect for me in terms of the aesthetic, in terms of the sole, and also in the comfort of this shoe. I've really got nothing but good things to say, except for the fact that um, I wish I could go back to the outlet to purchase the black. A little bit of a disappointing shoe purchase for me are these Heru loafers. And since my last review, there's been a couple of other things I thought I would mention that I've not been overly impressed with. First up, the moment I started to wear these, I got a rubber sole put on the bottom to protect the shoe. I honestly don't know shoes well enough to know if this is a typical design, but the brown extends over the sole. So if you were walking and you were to hit something, the bottom wouldn't be hit, but the top would. And because of that, I do have um, a little scuff on the front on this shoe as well as the other. 
even considering the fact that I've not really worn these shoes um, a lot. And I don't know how well you can say this, but the black part, the sole, extends beyond the shoe. And then with this shoe, the brown leather extends probably about half a centimeter over the sole. And this will mean kind of causes problems for durability. Another issue I've had with this shoe is that the edge kind of starts to fray with wear. And what happens is that it makes it super hard to tuck it back in into the buckle. So doing the buckle always feels very, very fiddly. I wish they just made this little bit of hardware a little bit bigger. Um, and that would solve a lot of this issue that I'm having. When we really get down to it, I feel like I just made a mistake in choosing out which style to buy. I chose the daintier one when I should have chosen the chunkier version. And with that shoe, all of these problems are kind of fixed. It has a chunkier sole and I feel like it wouldn't have the scuffing issue that this particular style has. It has a larger buckle which solves my buckle problem and then it's also chunkier which I feel like suits my body shape more. I actually get quite a few questions asking if I recommend Heru shoes. I recommend that style. I wouldn't recommend anyone to buy this style because I just don't find that it's worked out so well for me in any of the aspects. On a more positive note, I've really been enjoying these Massimo Duty loafers. These shoes are really great and I've been wearing these very often since getting them. I don't think this shoe looks very special if I just hold it up, but when I wear this shoe, it really feels very elongating and that's my favorite thing about this loafer. Square toe is very trendy right now, so I've been seeing it everywhere, but I don't really have a big appreciation for it because it does cut us off. But because this tape is in, I feel like it's actually quite flattering or as flattering as a square toe could be. I love that it has a small heel and the sole is not super chunky, but it's definitely still there and it extends over the shoe, which I feel like helps with durability. One of the reasons I decided to try this on is because I felt the back of the shoe and it felt buttery soft because this shoe can also be worn with the heel down. And this is what made me try on the shoe because I felt like it would be very comfortable with the softer leather. This shoe did take me about two or three wears to break in. And I think it's because this is more of a medium width shoe and I have wider feet. So in that sense, it took me a while to kind of stretch it out a little. I've been super, super happy with this shoe. I feel like it looks very sleek, very sophisticated. And I especially love wearing this with different trousers. These shoes over here are my Tibby loafers and I absolutely love these shoes. But I'm having the issue right now where this side has kind of come loose. I brought these shoes to the cobbler and he said that without the back, because I do think I have a missing piece, he can't really do much about it. So I'm gonna ask Tibby for the missing piece. If I don't have it, what I think I'll do is I'll just take off the gold, ask them to glue on this tab for me. So. Um, the shoe will look a bit different, but at least it will be wearable. I'm a little bit annoyed because other than this issue I'm having, this is actually a very nice shoe. It's sturdy, it's got a nice sole. Um, I love this tab, which is not to everyone's taste, but I love it. And great, um, just maybe don't lose one of the buttons. I do want to say and make the disclaimer that early on when owning the shoes, I think I fidgeted a little bit with this bow. Um, to see if I could get it out or I just did a bit of fidgeting and I think that probably contributed to me losing one of the buckles as opposed to it being the shoe's fault. I do want to make that disclaimer. I think it was probably me, not the quality of the shoe. The final pair of loafers are these ones and these are from a German brand which will pop up on the screen. I found these on my Teresa like heavily discounted. I think it might have been 70% off. My review of this shoe is that the leather upper feels incredibly beautiful and soft. The leather feels really nice. And because it's so soft, I don't really get blisters from this upper. Of the loafers I own, this is the one that has the chunkier sole. And what I have to say about this sole is that it's really heavy. In my experience, heavier shoes just tend to be not as comfortable as a lighter shoe. It feels more like a burden to wear. That's really all I have to say about this shoe. Everything is pretty good, except for the fact that the chunky sole makes it quite heavy. And that's definitely my least favorite thing about this shoe. My biggest recommendation is that if you're looking for a shoe with a chunky sole, make sure that it's not too heavy because that often happens with chunky sole shoes. And I find something lighter, usually a little bit more comfortable. Out of my loafers, this pair is definitely my most worn and is going to be my most worn, just because I think it matches all my pants, my jeans, my dresses. I think that it's the most comfortable out of the lot, so it's going to get the most wear when I'm walking a lot. 
And overall, I just feel like the style is both classic, but also a little bit elevated and unique with the fringe and the brass. I feel like this is the longest video ever, but we're finally onto boots. And I have four pairs in my collection. Two pairs are from De Francis, so we'll start here. I've had these boots for maybe two or three years and I absolutely love them. I feel like De Francis shoes are priced quite high. Um, they're almost at that designer luxury price point. But I feel like instead of seeing it in logos, you do feel it in the quality. Because even though I've worn both of my boots a lot, they're not really showing any wear and tear. I'm not getting scuffs, I'm not having any issues. And that's pretty rare to come by in my shoes. As I said, I'm hard on my shoes. So to not really have much wear and tear is very good and it's very rare. These are the spirit boots and I believe this color might be called port. But it's a stunning rich burgundy color. And I find this shade to be so beautiful for autumn going into winter. The first thing I notice about these boots is that they're a little bit higher than the usual boot. So how I usually like to wear these is to wear it with a long skirt where it kind of hits over the boot and you almost get that high boot look but with a mid-length boot. And then I also love to wear them with different trousers where it falls over the boot but not so much where it covers all the boots. So around here, I feel like it's the perfect length for trousers and for skirts. It has a zip on the inside and then a fairly substantial heel. So it's a block heel which makes it so much easier to wear and I feel like for a boot with this kind of heel height, this shoe is quite comfortable. I do a lot of walking in my life, so I'm definitely not going to be wearing this um, casually on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm running a ton of errands. But for the weekend, to dinner, to a nicer kind of day out, sure. Something very important that I haven't mentioned is that the shoe is very soft. So you can see it's a buttery soft leather, and it's definitely not a very structured hard leather, which can obviously be a little bit less comfortable in comparison to this softer leather. I've really got nothing but good things to say about De Francis shoes and I've been very happy with my spirit boot. My other pair of De Francis boots are the park boots. So first design detail I want to point out is that the two sides are a little bit different because they have the different beads at the front and that's always been a touch that I really like. A very subtle design thing that just brings something special to this lace up boot. They don't seem to do many sales, but I do believe, and I'm not sure if it is, I'll link it down below, that the Black Friday sale has actually started. So for this shoe and the spirit boot, I do believe they currently have a sale. I think either 20 or 25% off their shoes right now. Out of the two shoes, this is the one that I wear more just because it's more of an everyday boot. It's more of a flat shoe with the chunkier sole. The lever on this shoe is again, buttery soft. You can see it when I move this shoe around, how soft it is. And I've never once gotten a single blister from this shoe or the other. In terms of design, there are only two things that really stand out to me. The first are these little beads, which obviously are asymmetrical. And the second thing is that because it's a really soft lever, I feel like the look of it is a bit softer. It kind of almost follows the shape of our ankle due to the soft leather. I've really got nothing but good things to say. You've seen me wear this for a couple of years now. You'll see me wear it for many, many, many years more. And it's just forever going to be that staple black lace-up boot in my wardrobe. This boot is definitely more of a fashion boot versus being super classic. And it's from the brand Mister. The first thing I love about these boots is definitely this shiny finish. If you pair this with something simple like jeans and a knit, the texture of this boot really elevates that outfit. And that's my favorite thing about these shoes. If I show you the inside of the zipper, you can see the stitching key. And I feel like it's being finished with some glue. And what it does is that it creates a hard little bit that really digs into my skin. And it's really small, but over time that doesn't really get better. So every time I wear this boot, I feel like it's a little bit uncomfortable. There are definitely easy ways around it, like wearing a higher sock. But for me, it's more that it's a sign of poor quality and I'm not super impressed by that. My last pair of boots are ones I really, really love. This is from the Australian brand Bared Footwear. And the shoes have been designed with a podiatrist. What that means is that with every shoe, they actually have ways um, with the orthopedic insert things to customize a shoe to either make it wider or more narrow depending on which insert you use and there are lots of options like that that makes their shoes really comfortable when i purchased this shoe in store they also gave me um sort of other inserts so if you wanted to adjust the width you could put these in there are also these inserts and i just like that there are options to customize the fit 
and make sure the shoe is really comfortable on. Beyond the comfort of these shoes, I just love the pointed toe look. I think it's so elongating, it makes everything feel a little bit more sleek. And if I want to dress up an outfit, make it feel more chic, then these are the boots I reach for. These are more of an everyday casual style, whereas this is really great at dressing up an outfit and making it feel a bit more formal and put together. This is the only shoe I've tried from Barefoot Wear and I've been so impressed by the comfort, um, the style, and how versatile it is in my wardrobe. So if you're looking for boots and you have access to them, I feel like Barefoot Wear is a really good place to check out. Of the boots, my most worn would definitely be a tie between the De Francis Park boots, as well as the Barefoot Wear Pointed Toe boots. On to the final category, this has been the longest video. I'm going to talk about sandals, and I'll just show you my sandal collection from the most worn to probably the least worn. Without a doubt, the most worn sandals in my collection are the ancient Greek sandals. These just have the crisscross leather tabs, and this is my most worn because this is the most comfortable. It's got that thicker sole, so it feels more supportive, and this is the only shoe of my summer shoes that I feel like is ultra comfortable and it can rival something like a sneaker. If I'm walking a lot, I can actually wear this shoe um, when most of the other shoes probably won't do it. This shoe doesn't look like the most exciting at all, but when I style it with summer dresses with more girly pieces, I actually love the way it looks and it's my favorite summer shoe. These are some really fun pop of red sandals from Charles and Keith. I just feel like a pop of red sandal is so chic in a summer outfit they make the perfect, more statement shoe to a simple outfit and I wear these all the time for summer. I love that they're dainty and they've got the different straps going on which I feel like makes them feel a little bit more chic than maybe something super chunky. These are my other ancient Greek sandals, so um, the same brand as these ones. Ancient Greek sandals do a lot of shoes like this. I find these to be pretty durable, so after a couple of seasons, um, they're still looking pretty good, like I'm not having any issues with them, even though I've worn them on holidays, you know, maybe a little bit close to the water when I probably shouldn't have. They're still looking perfect and no issues. In my experience, summer sandals don't always last forever, but I imagine they should last you a good 2-3 years of frequent wear with no issues because they do feel very sturdy. Um, I don't know what would happen to them. I've got some fun little suede shoes here, and these are from Aquazura. If I wanted a dressier pair of summer shoes, I'd probably be wearing this style. And I also love the ties around the ankle. The suede material is actually very similar to the brown loafers I own. And what I find with the suede is that it's softer. So all of these ties and the front straps, they don't ever dig in because of the softer material. I love the softer material, I love the color of these and I get a pretty decent amount of wear from these in the summer. I have these ultra fun bright blue patterned Birkenstocks. These are shoes that I think are so fun and I'm noticing now it's the same color as my New Balance shoes. So a pop of cobalt is obviously something I've liked for a long time because it does keep reoccurring in a lot of my things. I can imagine very cool and modern dresses, maybe doing some socks, you know, doing different combinations with these. Um, that's just a bit outside my comfort zone. So most of the time you'll see me wearing a t-shirt, a simple skirt with these shoes. We've got another pair of slides from D. Francis. The shoe is a khaki color and you've got the fun little bows at the front, which just gives this type of shoe a little bit more of a feminine look. What I like about this shoe is that it has very soft leather, similar to any D. Francis shoe I've tried. And it really feels like it hugs the foot and kind of molds to it as you wear it. Compared to the other two kind of chunkier sandals I've shown, this is by far the softest in the material. What I don't love about the leather is that because the inside is also leather, it does feel a bit more delicate under the foot compared to some of the other shoes. I've gotten questions about whether this shoe squeaks. I don't know if it didn't happen before, I didn't notice before, but I was wearing them recently and they just squeaked the whole time. Maybe it was a particularly hot and sweaty day, I, I don't know, but they do make some squeaking sounds, which is obviously not ideal at all. That's also something that I feel like can be improved by these shoes, um, but I do love the way they look with the green and then the little ties. These are called the Tanya sandal and it's got this cool kind of hexagonal heel, which is quite nice. Um, it's a nice block heel, so a little bit more comfortable. It's got these two very thin minimal straps and it's a pretty flat kind of shoe at the front. Because it's got the minimal straps, it means that there's not a huge amount of support. Obviously, your foot is only held by these straps, so you're not going to get a very supportive shoe 
unlike if this was a thicker strap. There was definitely a summer where I wore these as my casual sandal and nowadays I don't know how I did it because it wasn't a super comfortable shoe. I think I just um, tolerated them because I love the way they look. Nowadays, they're definitely more of an occasional shoe. Some of you wear going out to lunch or dinner, uh, but not walking around every day. I do want to say, considering that I wore them casually for so long, they've held up really well and they're still looking really good. But to be fair, I mean, there's not many places where it can really go wrong. I've not got many scuffs at the front and I think adding the sole really helped prolong the life of this shoe. My final shoe are these St. Agni sandals. I feel like these are in last place, but I, I do like them. I do wear them sometimes, um, just not as often as some other shoes I own. It's a light brown color. It's got all of these straps and it's got more of your kind of typical thin sandal sole. I find these to be quite comfortable. Anytime a shoe has, I think, larger straps and it really holds my foot in, I find it to be more comfortable than really delicate thin straps. Um, where your foot kind of moves around or you have to grip onto the shoe a bit more. In terms of comfort, I've never had blisters from these straps and I feel like the leather St. Agni uses is usually pretty soft um, because they do a lot of sandals like this one. If you're wondering why I don't wear these shoes more often, there's nothing wrong with this shoe but I feel like sometimes if I want a flat sandal, I'll choose something a little bit more dainty and then when I wanted a more casual sandal, I'll probably choose the ones with the thicker sole um, that are more comfortable than this. So this was always in between and I never wore it as much. Today's video was a super long one, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below, what is your favorite shoe in your collection? I would love to know. And what shoes you wear most of the time? My partner's office is super casual, so we wear sneakers most of the time. But depending on your work dress code, your lifestyle, I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you later in the week for my Cezanne video because I'm doing two videos a week for the next few weeks. If you enjoyed today's video, I would love for you to go hit the like button and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Bye.